Hello everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Are You Using the Right Seed Treatments?, which is brought to you by Germain Seed Technology. I'm Robin Sitberg of Meister Media Worldwide, publisher of American Vegetable Grower Magazine. In this webinar, we'll discuss whether or not you're using the right seed treatments, the benefits of seed technologies, and how to request seed treatments that are appropriate for your crops and growing environment. The session is scheduled for one hour, and we'll have time for some questions and answers after the presentation. If at any time during the presentation you would like to ask a question, type it in the question pane at the lower left panel of your presentation window and click Submit. Your question will go into a queue and we'll do our best to answer as many as we can at the end. Now I'd like to introduce our presenter for the webinar, Dale Krolikowski, Head of Operations and Research for Germain's California location. Dale has been working in the field of research chemistry for more than 20 years and has been at Germain's since 2009. He manages the R&D team that has created innovative seed technologies that improve emergence and uniformity as well as seed disinfection to reduce disease transfer to the field. In addition, Dale also manages the daily production activities and oversees the quality control department, making sure products meet high quality standards and customer expectations. So now I'm pleased to turn the program over to Dale. Thank you very much, Robin. Well, welcome everybody to um, our second webinar of the series. And you know, Jermaine's is trying to take a new approach out here and um, try to educate growers and seed dealers, seed producers, and various people about what exactly seed treatments are and how you can best utilize them in order to improve the value that you get during the growing of your crops. So we're gonna we're gonna touch into this a little bit today, and um, you know look at our agenda a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit about Jermaine so everybody has a little bit of overview as to who we are. We're going to certainly want to get into, you know, talking about seed treatments versus seed technology and kind of give you a little um, explanation what the differences are. We are going to then um, talk about the four categories of, of technologies that we offer. Priming, pelleting, film coating, health, and then we're going to talk a little bit about custom in your orders and um, you know how you want to select and, and pick your seed technologies. Then we'll wrap it up with a little bit of summary and then do some Q&As. And before we get into all of this, and, and um, I want to know a little bit more about the people that are on the line. So let's do a little bit of audience poll and get to know each other a little bit better. I hope you had enough time to answer those questions. We're going to continue on and talk a little bit about Germain Seed Technology. We um, operate in eight different locations between the U.S. and Europe. That we have four different labs that are dedicated to developing innovative new products. And all, the focus in R&D is all about collaborating with our customers, specifically growers and seed producers, to find seed treatments that actually really provide a service and a value to the growers. Our products are distributed worldwide. And we, we work very closely with over 250 seed dealers and breeders in the U.S. The operations where I'm focused at in Gilroy focuses really on vegetable species. So let's talk about seed technology versus a seed treatment. What, what does this really mean? You hear the two words kind of thrown around back and forth all the time. And, and um, you know, back through the history, you know, when Germain's was first creating seed pellets, you know, we considered that a seed treatment. You know, we're simply taking a material and um, forming it around a, a seed, making it plantable um, to go through a mechanized planter and, and establishing, you know, preferential spacing of seed in a row. And that was kind of real simple, real simple kind of seed treatments back in the days. Um, those pellets were developed back in the early 40s and 50s. But, you know, as things progress, just like um, everything else in the world, you know, technology comes into play and how do you how do you incorporate different types of technology into seed treatments becomes important. Um, it's, it's become much more sophisticated as a business in terms of much more control by regulatory um, conditions and things pertaining to issues such as dust off of, of agri 
chemical products and different things like that, make it um, a requirement to get more advanced in the things that we do. You know, when we talk about technology, it's, it's how do we look at the seeds and each individual seed lots, and how do we make sure that we are in actually improving and enhancing the, the vigor or the speed of emergence or the uniformity of the seed lot. There's a lot of different techniques out there that are, that are used these days to do that. Um, you know, this, this photograph here is kind of a, an example of a, you know, imaging system and a tray system where you can really get a good look at um, the length and development of the, of the plant and see how your treatment is really affecting the growth of individual seeds. We offer um, a lot of different technologies and, and to investigate their ability to enhance the maturation or improve the potential of each seed lot. You know, we have different types of growth chambers. Um, some of them are quite sophisticated with um, lots of different lighting capabilities, um, the ability to map temperature and um, relative humidity to a specific planting location. A lot of these different technologies give us the ability to customize solutions for growers in different regions. And I think that's a, that's a big difference in seed technology versus the seed treatment. The seed technology is really focusing on customized solutions that meet an individual's needs. It's a good example of a, of a field trial that um, we conduct often in R&D. It's really about randomizing a block in a field and doing big enough reps and rows so that you can really see the difference. And in, in this kind of case, XYZ is a, treat, a treatment that we're in development with and comparing that to the raw seed. And we're looking for effects against disease pressure against soil pathogens. And it's, it's pretty evident in the, in the raw seed that, um, that you've got a lot of patches and, and missing plants. And that's loss revenue to a grower. Seed treatments are all about trying to return that revenue back to the grower. So if we, you know, look again back to technology, is, you know, we can send people out to a field and we can count individual plants in a row and we can, um, uh, you know, measure how many in are in a rep and stuff like that. Um, but there's other, other methodologies such as this shown here where we can um, take images of fields and we can reverse those images and we can run those through computer programs and we can measure actual leaf area and leaf canopy development. You know, leaf canopy and leaf area is what is going to be the final product that a grower is going to harvest. And so that's, you know, that's the thing that really drives innovation is having data that we can use to help a grower make a decision how much more yield he might get based upon leaf area, leaf canopy, and what is the value of that seed treatment that, it, that we're bringing to him. So, you know, as a grower, you're out there every day. You, you see your harvest crews harvesting, and you want to make sure you're there, they're picking um, the best crop they can. And, you know, that means we are trying to make sure that there's a return to the ranch, that there's a value of the investing in the seed technology and bringing that value back home to you. And the fun part I see about seed technology is that you know, despite having different categories of priming, pelleting, film coating, and health, is that dependent upon the species that you're playing with and growing and the seed lots that you have in hand, you can look to maximize the potential of those seed lots by combining different types of technologies that are out there. You may need to prime seed to break dormancies. You may need to add a film coat to protect it against insects. You might need to disinfect that seed lot against some um, seed-borne pathogens. And the beauty of these technologies is they can easily be combined and then adding much more value on top of everything. We have many different types of products. We operate in many different areas with many different species, um, offering both conventional and organic or our ProBio line of seed coatings and seed treatments. When we start to talk about priming, you know, many growers out there don't really understand, I think, sometimes as to what are the attributes of priming. So if we just um, ask a couple questions, you know, what, what are you actually looking for when you're planting? You're looking for crop uniformity and quicker germination? Are you looking for 
early and better canopy development to beat the weeds? Are you looking for seeds that handle a wide range of temperatures and grow under different conditions? Of course, I know you're looking for final plant population to be improved so that you can have more harvest going to the market. These are the things that priming actually brings to individual seed lots. And it's really understanding and knowing what the seed lots are, you know, that will help you to optimize your harvesting and give you a better yield in the end. We talk a little bit more about priming. You know, let's kind of look at this photo here where, where the top row of seeds are unprimed raw seeds and the, um, the bottom set is a, as a priming treatment. Seeds are just like people. Every seed in the seed lot is different. Every seed lot is different. And every species grows differently. You know, customizing priming treatments with our Emergis brand and can be done either organically or conventionally is all the, you know, the 40 to 50 years of priming technology expertise that we have at Germain's. Where we um, have a large database of different species, we know how different varieties are going to perform, but yet we still calibrate each individual seed lot to make sure we can maximize its ability to germinate rapidly and grow in a uniform manner so that translates into a better field, plant, stand, and harvestable yield. So like I said, priming's all about, you know, individual seeds are different. They're all grown on the stock differently. They're all at different levels of maturation when they're harvested. And priming is a way of making sure that those seed lots are all starting off at the same time. I can't get into too many details on the technical side of all the different things we use in priming. It's, um, you know, it's our intellectual property and our ability to, to understand individual seed lots and, and maximize how they do. But the big take-home thing about priming is if you have a seed lot that has poor germination, you know, and you go get a seed lot tested and you find out that your germination percentage is 85%, let's say, and um, you read the report in detail and they say, well, there's non-viable or dead seeds there. Dead seeds cannot be brought back to life. And here's, a, here's a great example of a, a test known as the TZ test in the industry where um, seeds are sliced open and stained in a the viable, mature embryos that are going to develop into the plant or get fully stained, as those two on the left, versus the dead, non-viable embryos that are out there in a seed lot. And those are never going to come into a, um, a harvestable plant or even germinate. So priming can't bring dead seeds back to life, but it can take viable seeds and make them equal, make them grow uniformly, break their dormancies, and offer a much better yield in the field. So in a, an example here, we, we see a primed rows to the left, very uniform growth at a very early stage after planting, and then leading to much more mature, uniform growth where there'll be more harvestable yield in the end. And that's all, all brought on by, by, once again, treating those seed lots individually, just like um, people we treat individually, that everybody's level of potential is brought out to its best. You know, priming is not only about leafy greens. We often talk about it on, on species such as lettuce and breaking dormancies, photodormancy or thermodormancy in the lettuce um, for the desert plantings, and that's, that's super important for our industry. But priming is also really good on, on root crops. In this case, you know, we're looking at some root crops here, and, and the uniformity of the prime seed, larger roots, more uniform roots, more harvestable yield, more sellable product. So priming within Germain site in Gilroy and worldwide. You know, worldwide we're capable of priming many species, and we focus a lot on the conventional side and the organic side over here in Gilroy, and you can see the series of species that we prime. So it is a nice combination of, of leafy greens, brassicas, cucurbits, as well as some uh, root crops. Um, you can always ask, if you see a product up here that's not on this list, 
Um, we are, we're always developing new technologies, or we, we may have the same technology in, um, in our sister company over in the Netherlands that we can use. So there's always possibility that we can meet your needs with a, with a new priming. Just have an inquiry and ask sometime. So that's enough about priming. So let's, let's talk a little bit about um, the next item, and that's going to be pellets. So let's take a short break here and have a little audience poll about pelleting. All right, I hope everybody had some time there to um, take those poll questions. We're going to continue on um, and talk about pelleting. And pelleting certainly used in combination with priming is a stack product that is quite often used in the industry. You know, priming, once again, is waking up that embryo, making that embryo more mature and ready to go. And then the pelleting is all about them. Um, you know, getting singulation in the field. So when you when you think about pelleting, do you ever want to have um, concerns about planting accuracy and spacing? You know, certainly that's important when we're growing different species out there. And you want to make sure you want to be able to reduce labor costs for field thinning after you plant. It's getting more and more popular to plant to stand. And through different seed technologies, that uh, that is going to become a reality to be able to plant to stand. Do you find that some pellets work in your planters while others don't and others cause problems? That's because not every pellet is the same. And there's differences in pellets, and they can cause you issues out in the field. And, um, and different planters respond differently to the different materials. Do you notice that there are some pellets remain in place when you flood irrigate and others don't? Once again, different agronomic practices, different growing regions require different pellet materials to suit the need to give you the most benefit as a grower. Are you having trouble handling small fields or, or seal, feel like you're wasting seed? Um, it's, it's quite a common practice that uh, the wrong size pellet or the wrong planter belt, and then you'll, you'll find yourself wasting seed in a field. That's your input cost. You're throwing money out by, by losing that input cost, and having the right pellet and the right technology will help you save those costs. At Tremains, we offer a variety of different pellets, both on the, again, the organic and the conventional side. An example of some of ours that we offer are the, are the PPH, or the Pro Pellet Heavy Pellet. Uh, it's, a, it's lightweight, it's white, it's a melting pellet, very much used in the coastal regions of, of California. The PPL is light, melting pellet as well for the coastal regions. The PPL Elite was a pellet specifically designed for um, for adding micronutrients to seed, and uh, specifically for celery. And this is kind of a, a unique pellet where we looked at a species and, and thought about what are the nutritional needs of this plant and how can we influence that with our pelleting material, and that's PPL Elite. Oxycote. Oxycote is, is grown, used in the U.S. desert market area. It's a heavy tan pellet. It's a splitting pellet. stays in place with flood irrigation. For, so when you're planting on top of that bed, windy conditions, et cetera, you know that pellet's going to drop and singulate and stay in place. So once again, there's not one pellet, one size fits all. It's just like shoes. Everyone's different. You've got to make sure you get the right size and the right feel for you for the right pellet for the right growing conditions. Continuing on, we have some, some other assortments of pellets, such as encrustments. You know, encrustments are used to just a minimum build around the seed. It's just enough material to give you some weight and some size build so that that seed will plant through a planter. Um, there's a, a product we sell called ProFlow, which is a heavy precision encrustment. Um, so we're building up to a little bit more precision around size. It improves singulation and it improves flow when using a vacuum seeder. 
um, we often get requests, um, especially on the onion side, about building seed lots to a seed count or to a pellet count. And that's where the, these products like ProFlow come in, where you know we can take a seed lot of 90,000 seeds per pound and add a specific weight of pelleting material to get you to a, a, a pellet count of 50,000 seeds per pound or whatever is required for your planting density. Once again, you know, all, the, all the different pellet types and combinations are, are unique. And even within our brand, a ProFlow pellet brand may still have a different pelleting material composition. And that's, that's unique you know, for a specific species. You know, our ProFlow onion is not the same blend that we would use for ProFlow parsnip. We realize that those two species are grown differently, planted differently, and, and just different agronomic practices. And we design our pellets specifically for different species. ProFlow Precise is a great product when used for baby leaf lettuce. It's, um, it's great for use in spider planters. It reduces the wear on the planter sponges. And it can allow a grower to save on input cost by reducing the amount of seed planted per acre from, two and a half, from 4 million seeds per acre down to 2.5 million seeds per acre. And, you know, let's face it, we're into seed technology. We're all into ag to grow a, a, a product that is cost-effective for our customers, and we have to watch our input costs. So anytime you can, you can save money on, on seed input costs, the, the, the better off we are. Pellets are conventional, organic, as I said before, with our ProBio line, and we offer pelleting over a variety of different species worldwide. When it comes to the film coat category, you know, film coating is a whole other side of seed technology. And when you know, when it comes to film coating, do you often want different things? I'm sure, and part of that might be precision application of agrochemicals. This is becoming more and more critical all the time, with fewer and fewer pesticides being registered by the large pesticide companies, the precision application of them is, is critical. Um, you have to make sure that with the expensive cost of these insecticides and fungicides that, that you get the right dosage on your seeds so that they are effective in the field. You want to simplify your methods by protecting your crops. You're looking to protect your crops as soon as they germinate. That's the beauty of seed applied chemicals, pesticides, and insecticides is protecting the crop as soon as it germinates. It can reduce the number of field applications for agrochemicals. That's what we're all looking to do is reduce our exposure for our workers in the field with sprays, reduce the impact on the environment with sprays, and having more precise application of agrochemicals onto the seed itself. Improving the visibility of your seeds in the field. Um, it's very important. We have to protect our farm workers. Pelleted, treated seed with agrochemicals um, by federal law required to be colored in a manner to distinguish them from natural seed so that they do not get mixed into the food chain or the animal food chain. And um, so film coating is, is about that ability to hold those chemicals in place and make them visible to the worker. Certainly, one of the most important things these days is reducing dust off or residual drift around the environment. Um, we all know about the issues with uh, bee populations and bee die off, and having the proper film coat with the proper um, amount of polymer binders in place that adhere the agrochemical to the seed is, is critical these days. Um, we take great, great pride in germane of of ensuring that the amount of um, active ingredient per milligram of seed as directed by the label is what is being applied. And we routinely are sampling seed lots as we treat them and um, making sure that the chemical loading meets the label requirements and that the dust off um, meets our internal requirements for dust off standards and we are adhering those agrochemicals to the seed in a professional manner. We film coat a variety of different fungicides and insecticides that are available on the market these days. And a lot of these um, uh, are well known in the industry and are great performers in the field and offer great benefits to the growers out there to reduce the numbers of sprays, 
increase your plant population at an early stage and protect you against soilborne diseases or insect damage. Um, there's a few organic products out there that are that are applied as well, and um, our film coating methods are um, organic and OMRI, OMRI approved, NOP approved, and certified through our certified agent ASCO. And um, it's uh, it's we take great pride in knowing that on the biologicals that we are adhering the correct number of colony forming units of of bacteria or fungi spores to the seed, and that it will be an effective treatment in the field. We look at some of the benefits of film coating um, pesticides on, on seed. You know, these are some examples from some of the, some of our suppliers of, of um, the different insecticides and fungicides. Um, pest protection is getting much more prevalent in, in our area. We're seeing new invasive species from time to time. The Brigada bug was a a big invasive species over the last couple of years on the brassica crops, and um, the the two different insecticides out there, specifically Nipsid, in, in this case, works quite well at protecting brassicas and leafy greens against the Brigada bug. So film coating conventional, a lot of different crops from the, the carrots, the brassicas, the leafy greens, spinach, tomato, and then on the organic side, a, a whole host of different species as, as well that we can offer a, an organic film coating process um, with some sort of biological protection. Time for another audience poll. Before we get into the health brand, let's um, find out a little bit, you know, what do you know about seedborne diseases? All right, that should have given me enough time to answer, answer a few of those questions. So when we talk about our, our health category, you know, and, and that pertains to seed health, well, you know what, what are we actually looking to do? Certainly we're looking to reduce and avoid crop loss. Crop loss is loss of revenue, and with proper seed treatments, um, you can protect your early emerging plants from soil-borne pathogens and maintain the revenue that you would expect to get out of a, out of a harvest. You can prevent seed-borne pathogens from contaminating your field. It's super important to your rotating crops. You do not want to take a, um, one species that has a, um, a leaf blight or other pathogen on the seed and put that into your soil and then affect the crop that you're going to be growing downstream. So knowing how clean your seed is and reducing the pathogen load on seed entering your field can all be done with good health technologies. Do you want to produce larger seedlings with more developed roots? That's the other benefit of health technology. Health technology is not only about seed disinfection or soil protection against pathogens, it's also about nutrient balance. How do we maximize and give an, an early developing root system the minerals and vitamins, so to speak, that it needs in order to produce well-developed roots? If you can stimulate and produce well-developed roots, then you stand a better chance, too, of, of avoiding damage and attack by seed-borne pathogens. Seed health can help you to improve uniformity and optimize your yield. And certainly, you know, getting that early canopy establishment development, like we talked about earlier with priming, in combination with seed health, will certainly help you um, establish a crop and increase your yields.
Seed health has two different kind of categories. Seed disinfection is really looking at the incoming seed lots and removing pathogens that are on the seed that could lead to um, any numbers of diseases. And then there's the aspect of adding micronutrients and improving the physical ability of the plant to absorb the nutrients it needs from the soil. Seed disinfection is one category that's been growing in the last number of years. And as we all know about um, phytosanitary permits of moving seed around the world get more and more complex, it becomes more and more important to have clean, disease-free seed during those transports. And once again, not putting um, transfer of soil-borne diseases into your field. It can be done organically and conventionally, and it can eradicate a, a whole series of different pathogens. Uh, and it's, in a, it's, it's available on different species and dependent upon what issues one might have. You know, the benefits of, of seed disinfection, for example, with our ProBioGopier product is, is all around reduction of pseudomonas on Swiss chard, red beets, coriander, and, and kale seeds. Um, these fast-growing baby leaf crops of Swiss chard and beet uh, are in the field for no more than 28 days at times, 25 days at times in the, in the strong summer. But if your seed lot has um, high levels of pseudomonas, you can get bacterial leaf spot that can spread very rapidly through your field and you could lose an entire field. Um, our ProBioGopier process is an organic certified process. Um, it's, a, it's a unique proprietary technology to germanes that um, we're capable of treating very large volumes of, of these species. And when you're planting 4 million seeds per acre or, or so here, it takes large volumes of throughput and an effective treatment to reduce those levels of pathogens. And once again, if you're removing them from off the seed, and it improves the performance and growth in the field and prevents transfer of those pathogens to the soil. Here's a good example of with and without. You know, which one would you want to plant, right? Which one would you want to harvest? You know, clean seed or dirty seed? It's pretty simple when you see the, so the, the, the plants on the right that are um, all infected with bacterial lace spot can't be harvested, will all be disked in and thrown away. So you've spent the money on input cost of the seed, prepping and growing, um, uh, arranging the field, water, et cetera, to get it to germinate, and then you're going to end up throwing it away. And you could have avoided that with, um, with good, clean seed by, by looking into the practice of, of seed disinfection. The ProBioGopier, Scott, oh, shoot, we're probably on four years of proven results now um, where we look at the incoming seed lots and we test for the amount of um, CFUs or colony forming units of the Pseudomonas species on the different seed lots. And from there, we developed the treatment, so we were very effective at reducing the, um, the amount of seed-borne pathogen. Um, we've come up with, with some of our collaborators as a, um, as a standard that if we're below 500 CFUs or less of pseudomonas, that then with the fast-growing crop, you can, you can grow and harvest without any incidence of um, pseudomonas or bacterial leaf spot on the, on the seed on the plants. It's been a very effective treatment and, and very widely used. Seed disinfection for other species such as spinach, um, we, we have a seed treatment called Gopier, which is a combination of different seed applied fungicides which inhibit the growth of seed borne fungal pathogens. You know, specifically we're targeting Verticillium dallii and preventing the transmission of Verticillium from seed-born spinach into fields that would then eventually grow lettuce. Um, the treatment is also effective against Stemphilium leaf spot, Cladosporium leaf spot, and Altenaria. Um, the great part about spinach gopier treatment is that um, since it is a seed-applied fungicide that stays on the seed, when it's planted in the ground, you also get protection against the soil-borne pathogens that would lead to early dampening off diseases like Pythium, caused by Pythium, Rhizoctonium, Fusarium. A nice example of um, dirty contaminated seed. You know, we, when 
different growing regions are producing seed lots. They're at the at the um, the risk of producing seed lots with seedborne pathogens. Um, it's quite often in growing regions where there's late um, rains and cold conditions, damp conditions, right at the point of harvesting, that there's a lot of saprophytic fungi and seedborne pathogens produced on those seed lots. And that makes it variable from year to year. So you could have years where there's great clean seed lots and nobody has to worry about it, and there's other years with high incidences of seed infection levels, and um, you should be looking at seed disinfections like um, ProBioGopier or Gopier to, to produce clean seed like you see on the right. On the other side of the health category is the micronutrient side. And it's about increasing nutrient uptake, producing really strong roots at an early stage, helping those roots absorb the minerals they need to develop a healthy plant. At an early stage, that improves vigor. That improvement in root mass can also lead to an increase in yield. At this time in, in our research, um, our Go Seed product is only available in the conventional sense. Um, it's quite hard to find um, different agents that will be approved organically for um, a micronutrient, but we do have some, some leads, some, some very interesting technologies that, um, that I hope you keep your eyes out for in the future. If you want to look at some of the benefits of, of Go Seed and having that early plant nutrition, um, this is a very big trial that was run a couple years back, and you can see the control on the left where there's a, a lot of space between the different heads of romaine in this case. Um, you know, so the plants weren't uniform. They're, they're not developing properly. Um, there are some are slower than others, and that's going to lead to less harvestable yield versus the go seed treated on the right, where you can see everything's upright, they're close spacing, it's more uniform, that's more yield, that's more benefit and profitability to the grower in the end. So after harvest, a lot fewer plants, um, not have to pay a crew to go pick a second time or anything like that to meet a market demand. Um, you, you paid the cost up front and got the value on the backside by, by the early plant nutrition offered by a seed treatment. It's so the continuation of some other trials where we looking at the benefits of go seed and desert lettuce. and We can quickly look at, at our oxycoat split pellet with um, our priming, our emergence priming versus our go seed, and um, comparing it against other other products. And you can see the, the benefits of oxy go seed is much bigger in the number of boxes or cartons per acre of harvestable lettuce in the end. And once again, that's the, the value that we're trying to bring on seed treatments is that there is an input cost to buy seed treatments but you're going to get a return on that investment by producing more, more crop in the end. An example of, of onions and go seed. More developed, longer root mass, um, a little more uniform. You know, and those, those longer roots, those are, those are just going to allow that starting plant to absorb more nutrients from the soil, more from its surroundings, better uptake the existing nutrients, potentially could save you on fertilizer input cost, etc. In the end, you're going to get a more more uniform or larger bulb mass, and that's more yield. It's more yield in the end for the market. Root crops such as carrot respond really, really well to go seed, and you can see the difference in, in uniformity. The smaller carrots, especially if you're doing cut and peel, all those kinds of things, um, you, you want more uniform, longer roots, and um, early plant nutrition right at the seedling emergent stage is the key to that success. Another, another example of carrots with the, with the great uniformity of, of the plants because of that early plant nutrition. Seed health, um, so once again on the conventional side, uh, a few options on different species and then some other options on the organic side. Um, the organic on the disinfection and on the micronutrient side on the, on the conventional. 
when it comes to customizing and ordering your seed technologies, there are, are many different options. Um, as you kind of learned today, you can stack the different technologies. You can select different pellets for different regions where you're growing. You can select different um, seed applied pesticides that you need to combat either a soil pressure or disease insect pressure. There are many different ways to, to customize an order. You know, the purpose of this webinar and some of the webinars we've been trying to do is to educate people. You know, there are options out there, and you've got to know what your options are. You've, you've got to know, you know, that you can prime or that you need to prime different seed lots to break their dormancies, um, that there's a benefit to adding seed nutrition at an early stage. There's a benefit to removing seed-borne pathogens. You, you know, to, to learn more and know more, you can always contact your seed supplier and ask them questions. Ask them what technologies are available. So an example of, um, you know, custom ordering, we, if you go to our website, you'll see that there's a section where you can, you can kind of do what we call the seed value calculator. You can put in your input cost and um, how much you plant per acre, and it'll, it'll give you an estimate of what will be your return on investment if you invest in something such as the Go Seed technology. So you should go to our website and check that out and, and throw in a couple of your numbers. If, you know, we used an example here with Romaine and um, you know, getting a, a gross per acre of $7,100 per acre is what your investment cost is to grow the crop. And if you're, you know, if you're harvesting 1,100 cartons per acre at the current price point, um, which is pretty low these days, you, your gross return is pretty small. Um, but the addition of go seed can create more value to you per acre. So once again, Germain's works with over 250 seed dealers and producers um, throughout North America, Mexico, and Canada. Um, we have the ability to stack many different technologies together to give you the best value, produce the best crop, the healthiest crop you can. So be sure to speak with your preferred seed supplier. Let them know that you attended this webinar and that you would like some more information about any of the treatments. If you're not sure about some things, you want to see some more, um, we'll be conducting series of trials throughout the year. Um, we'll call them our value justification trial, some desert trials. And, um, or you can contact your seed supplier and we can arrange some, some individual trials with you. So in summary, Intermains has been around for quite a while, over 145 years in the seed technology business. That seed technology has increased from simple seed treatments such as pelleting to very advanced technologies where individual pellets are characterized by unique materials that provide performance and benefits to different species under various conditions in the field. Priming that is directed towards improving individual seed lots. Not one priming is used for every seed lot. They vary and they are all about improving and maximizing the potential of, of the various seed lots. Film coating technologies that adhere and make sure that the pesticides that you spent money on are on the seed and they're performing in the field as you intended and need them to. And then, of course, the seed health side of offering really clean, healthy seed that is free of seed-borne pathogens that lead to plant diseases or further infecting the soil in the future. So there's a lot of different benefits of seed technology in terms of maximizing yield potential, improving emergence and uniformity, singulation, reducing your need to thin, increasing your early plant population, precision application of agrochemicals, seed-borne diseases of seed, clean seed and micronutrients. So in summary, once again, contact your preferred seed supplier ask them about custom technology, and if you're interested in trialing anything, let us know. For more information, you can always go to germains.com. I've got some time for some questions. We've got about 15 minutes left. So if anybody has any questions, we can, we can go through a few of those and, and get some answers to you. 
Okay, thank you, Dale. Um, so as he said, we have the floor open for questions. And if you have a question, please type it into the questions pane at the bottom left of the control panel and hit send. And we've already gotten a number of questions, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started. And Dale, this is a, a two-part question in a way. Uh, is your film coat, insecticide, and fungicide somehow more persistent than traditionally applied pesticides? That's the first part. And then how are they effective later when applied so early in the growth cycle? That's, um, that's, that's very good. I think the, the importance of having a good film coat applied fungicide and insecticide is, is getting the right application rate according to the label. You know, we, we base all the efficacy claims on the, on the manufacturer's labels, and so it's meeting those, those rates that are important. Um, typically, typically, we hear that a good seed-applied fungicide can offer protection up as long as like 35, 40, 30 days to 35 days in the field. So that's, that's pretty good. That could stop and emit maybe one foliar spray or one other soil spray, right? And so that's the, that's the beauty of seed applied. You can, you can usually get about um, you know, 25, 30, 35 days out of something like that. Okay, thanks. Um, the next one is, can priming lettuce speed up or reduce the length of time it takes to grow the crop? Yes, it can. That's a, that's a great question. We talk a lot about priming breaking photodormancy or ther thermodormancy in lettuce. But the increased speed of emergence is, is a really good point in priming. Um, if you can recall back to the, the, the green slide, the slide with the, um, the green gel showing the uniformity of the crop, um, speed is super important. Uh, we, we know we can decrease the amount of time to germination. And with that decrease, that carries through to having a plant that's harvestable at an earlier stage and maybe even carry longer in the field. Okay, can you, uh, another uh, viewer would like to know, can you reiterate the difference between prime and health as categories according to your company? Sure, sure. So priming is about um, looking at the individual seed lots, um, getting them to all, all the seeds within that seed lot to grow and emerge at the same time in a uniform manner with as much speed and vigor as we can, we can impart into that specific seed lot. That's quite different from the health side of the micronutrient where after that radical has emerged, there's nutrients available for it from the micronutrient package seed coating that's been put around that seed. So now you have a, a, a vigorous root from the priming, but it has nutrients right there for it to absorb which then stimulates the plant to even go a bit further and, and, and grow faster. Okay. Um, I'm going to combine these two questions. One person is asking uh, what treatments you offer for broccoli, and another one is asking about celery. So I don't know if you're able to answer those two questions. Well, we'll do, we'll do the broccoli first. Um, broccoli certainly has um, pellets that are used for plantability. Um, then on the on the agrochemical side, there are the seed apply fungicides for, for broccoli. Um, Nipsid is used quite often these days for against the Brigada bug, white flies, and thrips on broccoli and is, is super effective. On the celery side, um, we offer uh, our conventional pellets, the PPL pellets for celery, but we have the enhanced pellet, the PPL Elite, which has a specific formulation of micronutrients to improve celery root mass and development. Um, gives you much stronger plugs in the transplant, and then you see less celery dropping off after transplantation because the root mass is fully more, more fully developed. Okay, thank you. Um, we've gotten several questions about organic um, organic seed, and first one is, what organic seed suppliers are you working with for film coating? So or, um, organic seed suppliers that we're working with? Yes, um, for There's film a coating. whole variety of or, or organic seed suppliers that we work with. Um, um, there's a really good database for organic seed that you can, you can Google and look up, and that will tell you um, where you can get any species and what 
supplier it's coming from. Um, that's probably the best source, really. Okay. And then and, uh, and that or that that or contact your dealer, your local dealer, and ask them. Okay. And then um, another viewer is asking if there's any projections on when the Go seed will be available for organic production. Oh, that's great. I'll have to, I'll have to put my pressure back on my R&D team for that one. Um, <laughs> we're, we're getting really close, actually. We're, we're trialing um, a few different um, combinations of ingredients this year that um, are showing some decent benefit. And, um, once, once we do some further trials and we get them fully vetted by our organic certifier, I'd, I'd say by the end of this summer into fall that we should um, have a little bit more information out there about an organic go seed. Okay, and one uh, final question on the organic is, um, are there any, or I'm sorry, will you custom treat organic seed treatments on inbred seed corn, parent stock, or processing pumpkins or sweet corn? So do you do, you do any custom treatments of... I guess privately grown seed. Um, yes, we do. We do that quite often. Um, that's I think one of our bigger strengths is that we do look to collaborate with people for individual needs. Um, and so, if if you have a specific need or um, desire about something, you know, contact us and and let's talk about it. Um, you know, we we do offer customized solutions many many times. Okay, good. Um, a question about priming. Um, does priming reduce the shelf life of the seed, and can seed be over or under primed? And, and also a similar question is, can you provide any more information on priming chemicals, um, like the method, and, and if there's any success on dormant seed lots? So, mm -hmm. so, so the, the first part of that, um, certainly there are effects of priming on shelf life. Um, you know, when you're you're taking these embryos and you're driving them all to have the same level of maturity, that does take away some of the reserve storage proteins and energy proteins that that seed has that it's holding in order to get it to germinate. So you do see a reduction in shelf life on prime seed. Um, so you do have to take that into account that, you know, you're, you're going to want to prime seed, you're going to want to hold it under the right storage of relative humidity and temperature conditions and um, keep those conditions cold as possible and plant it as soon as you can. Um, typically, you, on many species, you won't see um, storage conditions or, or priming of shelf life affected. Um, but if the seed is already old and it lacks vigor, it lacks a lot of storage proteins, you can over prime seed in a heartbeat. And that's where our, our Emerges brand of priming, we calibrate each individual seed lot that comes into the factory, and we ensure that we're not going to overprime, and we adjust our priming methods accordingly. Or, you know, there are times we'll tell people, I'm sorry, we cannot prime this seed lot because of risk of overpriming it because of lack of vigor and in, in the age of the seed lot to begin with. As to what chemicals and what things we use, that is all a, a proprietary, and it does um, vary according to whether it's an organic prime or it's a conventional prime and, uh, and the type and duration of prime that we're doing. Okay. But. Do you um, have any research on beneficial pseudomonas, um, i.e., is it selective? That's another question we received. Yeah, I don't think we have any direct research on anything like that. Um, you know, we are certainly continuing to evaluate many different biologicals, many new biologicals that are coming into the market. Um, we are collaborating with um, many different companies at this point uh, who are looking at bio, um, microbiomes and stuff like these things, and we're looking for new treatments every single day to see the benefits of specific species and root colonization and how we can impart them into seed treatments. Okay, and, and then as a follow-up to that, someone is asking, is there anything for Fusarium Race 4? So, yeah, those, what, answer, those are the tricky. Those, those are the <laughs> tricky ones that are out there that are still yet to be uh, to be developed. Um, I'd, I'd want to know on that: uh, is that person looking for conventional versus organic? On the conventional side, there's probably some pretty new new um, fungicides that might be helpful. 
Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, another question that we've – there keep coming in. Um, is there a shelf life on pelleting? And in parentheses, they have non-priming. You answered the um, question. No, there, there, there wouldn't be. If, as long as the seed is stored properly um, and the, our, the pellets are very flexible in the sense of not hurting the seed germination, and um, there should be any effects on shelf life with, prim uh, with unprimed seed. Okay. We've got just a few more minutes. Um, another question is, do you create cuts via gravity table, sieve table, or uh, how, you know, how do you do that for uniformity? Our uniformity is all derived out of, out of the different priming methods and how we adjust those priming methods to create uniformity in the seed lot. Um, I'd say that the large, vast majority of seed that comes to our site has already been um, density graded on a table and those fractions already cut and um, we're just enhancing it beyond that. Okay. And what seed treatments do you offer for tomatoes? On the tomato side, um, we have a great prime for tomatoes. Um, offers um, some really nice advancements in speed and uniformity. That can be combined with um, a couple of different pellet types. Um, there are some seed applied fungicides as well that go into that. And we do offer the traditional methods of um, TSB treating tomatoes against them, diseases. Okay, we have a question from a grower who says they're located in the desert region of Arizona. And so what treatments do you recommend for their region, their lettuce grower? So for, for that, um, we're certainly going to want to look at the seed lots and look at um, their photo dormancy and thermo dormancy provide a priming that can help break those dormancies so that um, you can plant at much higher temperatures. Um, you're going to want to go with the OxyCoat split pellet. And I would recommend um, with the GoSeed micronutrient technology. OK. All right, um, the final question before we wrap up is, do I contact Germains directly to order, or is it best to order through my seed supplier? And then um, are they available for the eastern region of the United States? It would, be, um, it would be best that you contact your seed supplier and work through them. And uh, yes, we're, we ship um, things across country and to different countries all the time, so it's available on the East Coast as well. OK, great. Well, thank you, Dale. And um, thanks to our audience for you know, tuning in. And this wraps up our webinar. And as a reminder, an on-demand version of the webinar is available uh, in the next 24 hours. And you can get to it by just clicking on the same link you used to uh, get onto the live version today. So thank you so much for joining us. And thank you to Jermaine Seed Technology for sharing the information with us. Yes, and um, thank you, Robin, and thank everyone for attending. Um, if you have other questions, um, we will be attending the American Seed Trade Association meeting in uh, Orlando, Florida in a few weeks, and you can look for me there and we can have a, a further discussion. Thanks, everyone.